So in this video, I'd like to look at some of these tubes. Now, the first one I'm going to look at is called the Maltese Cross. And a lot of these you might have seen uh, in your physics classrooms. Now, the, these tubes all follow the same kind of principle. What we have is uh, pretty much a near vacuum inside the tube. At one end, we have uh, a source of charged particles. Uh, in this case, it's cathode, uh, cathode rays or electrons, and they're caused by thermionic emission up here. So we just apply quite a low potential difference. It causes thermionic emission of these electrons. They're accelerated through some kind of electric field, perhaps using an anode, and then we can study what happens inside. Now, this Maltese cross, uh, the way it's generally used is that you have uh, you earth the, the cross here using the connector at the bottom over here uh, and then you can also um, make that into the anode. So what we then have is charged particles, in this case uh, electrons which are negatively charged. As they are accelerated towards this um, cross, uh, a lot of the electrons hit it, the ones that don't hit it move on to the other side uh, and then you have this very distinct kind of shadow with very kind of sharp lines. How do we see these electrons? Well, we don't actually see them, but what we see is where these high-energy particles actually hit this screen, which has got a phosphor coating. That then uh, fluoresces, uh, and uh, the energy from the electrons then comes out in the form of visible light. Um, if, however, you were to disconnect the um, Maltese cross, over time, this cross would then become negatively charged, and what you see is that the shadow gets a bit more blurry uh, as uh, the electrons are kind of sort of being deflected by this, uh, again, a negatively charged thing here. So this first tube I'm looking at is the Maltese cross. This next tube here is called a deflection tube. Again, we have thermionic emission of electrons at this end. We accelerate them through uh, an electric field. But the bit we're really interested in is this part over here. Now, this is um, used to measure this deflection tube, is used to measure the charge to mass ratio, which is E over M. And we can do that by looking by applying two fields inside it. First of all, we can apply an electric field, and we do that uh, vertically up and down by perhaps you know, having uh, one of these at a positive potential. Um, and so we basically have this up and down electric field. Um, the other thing we can do is apply a magnetic field. And to apply this magnetic field, uh, we use uh, a couple of coils like these. Now these things here are called Helmholtz coils. Uh, and they're basically uh, to provide a magnetic field inside this tube. So we can set up these Helmholtz coils by having one behind and one in front. And what we then have is, effectively, if the current is moving in this direction, we then have uh, a magnetic field, which in this case is coming towards the camera. Think about that right-hand grasping wall that you might remember. So what we can do with these, with these uh, coils here is that we have... Um, a magnetic field that's either coming up or going down, and that then causes either motion up or down. And the idea with this is that as you have this uh, stream of charged particles moving across the screen, which again has a phosphor coating, so this fluoresces where you see the charged particles, we can maybe move the beam up using the electric field and then down using the magnetic field. And what we can try and do is maybe get the beam so it goes straight through. When it goes straight through, we can then use that information by measuring maybe the B field or measuring the size of the electric field in order to work out this charge to mass ratio. So this one is a deflection tube. The next tube that we have here is called a Perrin tube. Again, thermionic emission of electrons accelerated by a PD. And what this then does is it sends a stream of electrons over to this end where it causes the screen to fluoresce. But what we can do with this is use a bar magnet uh, to actually deflect that beam. And if we deflect it just enough, we can get it uh, to basically land in this uh, collecting can up here. What we can then do is connect this to a gold leaf electroscope uh, to basically show that, uh, and that actually allows us then somehow to uh, measure uh, the, kind of the fact it's a negative charge. And this was used to show that this stream of cathode rays is indeed a negative uh, stream of particles. And this cathode ray causes this transfer of negative charge. Now this tube here is used for electron diffraction. And this shows that uh, particles or things that we normally consider to be particles, these electrons, can actually be diffracted and therefore proving the wave-like uh, nature of some particles. So again, we've got thermion thermionic emission down here and actually this bit in here, that I'm sort of just pointing to in here, there's a very fine mesh of nickel 
and deposited, deposited onto that is a very, very uh, thin layer of uh, sort of graphite or carbon. And this is the target that's actually acting as our diffraction grating. But it's the electrons that as they move through this very, very thin kind of crystal lattice, they're uh, diffracted in 360 degrees, which then allows us to see this kind of circular pattern of concentric rings, um, which is, uh, again, fluorescing on the screen here. And this is evidence that electrons can behave and they travel like a wave. And the final tube that I don't actually have here is called a fine beam tube. And we can basically, uh, rather than having thermionic emission at the end, it kind of happens a bit further in this tube. If that's contained within the magnetic field, we then get a circular path of uh, electrons inside. We can actually see this circular path because what we have is a very low pressure gas inside it that uh, just fluoresces as electrons collide with it. Uh, and basically what we then get is this nice circular path showing again by um, you know, the Lorentz force that uh, electrons or charged particles moving in a magnetic field applied by these Helmholtz coils do actually travel in a circular path. So that's a review of the five main tubes that we need to consider for A-level physics.